Hi, personaries. Trust you're all doing amazing today. Are you all ready for the episode three of The Generous Revenge? This is the final part of this romantic story. Please, I advise that you read episodes one and two first before reading episode three so that you can understand and enjoy the story. Also, kindly subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the notification button to get updates as soon as they are uploaded. Thank you. Page 301 starts now. General in Limbo came back to her living room. He immediately took his jacket to wear, but she stopped him and asked him to please take a seat. He still stood with his jacket in his hands and said coolly, You obviously have a male guest coming to see you. Let me just leave, please. I don't want to be the obstacle to whatever you have going on with this person. General was already feeling jealous, lonely, and rejected. Those deja vu feelings came over him all at once. A male guest? No. He can't stand her breaking his heart all over again. Rassi took his jacket and said so subtly and sweetly to him, My king, I don't have any man in my life right now, except maybe you. Whoever it is, I will send him away right now. The general froze. Gosh, she called him my king. <laughs> that was a loving endearment for him when they started dating. He had never thought you would hear it from her lips ever again. But hearing her refer to him as my king now, weaken him to his knees. His legs couldn't hold him up. He sat down gently on the nearest sofa. His insides were melting. The great love he had felt for her was returning into his heart with full thrust, and he was really helpless to do anything about it. How did he even think he could resist her? What was he thinking? His revenge plans was gone. Maybe he should give her back the shares and live quietly before embarrassing himself or get his heart shattered all over again. Or he could tell her he would become a dormant partner so he does not have to be seeing her every day again. He may have to distance himself from her. I every word, I every look, in fact, everything about her is softening him up right now. Oh, Roy would really laugh at his field plans. Lembo answered the door and surprisingly, same Roy, Pepper's friend, stepped into her house. She had met him back then before she and General broke up. They exchanged pleasantries and she pointed to Perry to him. Perry was surprised to see him and stood up quickly. Roy shook his head and said, Guy, you don't pick up your phone. I have been calling you for the past one hour now. I would have called Lemo if I had the number. I have to travel to Ghana tonight for an impromptu trip. So I needed to drop some of your important documents and keys you have with me. I will not be back until next month. General collects the files and keys and apologized profusely. He didn't even know where he dropped his phone. Oh, he remembered switching it off as they entered her apartment. Then he spied it on the floor. At the same time, Roy saw it too. Lambo asked Roy if she could package some dried fruits and cookies for him with juice. He said yes, while looking from the general and back to Lambo again with a knowing smile on his face. Then he started teasing the general as Mercy was in the kitchen. Eventually, Roy left and general followed Lambo into a spacious kitchen as she brought out already cooked gizzard from a large fridge to fry for both of them. He took a knife from her set and started helping her to dice up plantain for frying. 
This was one of their favorite nightclub dish, Pepet Giz Dodo. They decided to eat in one plate on the couch with a chilled bottle of rose champagne. All the tension and Roy's interruptions caused them to become famished. His eyes never left us, even as they drank and ate. She noticed something as strange about him. He was looking at her the way he used to, so lovingly and devotedly, like magic. His eyes were filled with so much affection and adoration for her. Lambo smiled back shyly with love at him. She is not going to deny it any longer. She is still very much in love with the general. In fact, she will accept that she had never stopped loving him. This moment seemed like they had never even broken up at all. They were mentally back to the first day they started their love story. You called me your king, he said in a quiet voice, but with an intense gaze. When she kept smiling shyly, he gently raised her left fingers to his lips and placed a little kiss upon them. Mercy raised her head up, looked into his eyes and said, In my heart, you will always be my king. His heart started racing again, prompting him to frame a lovely face with his hands. Then he tapped his head once again to claim a lips with his. They were like that for some time until his fingers drifted down the thin chain he noticed that she always wore around the neck and encountered the band suspended on its end. He opened his eyes and whispered, Is that a ring? She nodded yes. He brought out the ring to take a look and received the shock of his life. The general was staring live and direct at the diamond ring he placed on Lambo's fingers the day he asked her to marry him and she accepted. They had become unofficially engaged that day, but unfortunately, she broke it all off two weeks later. But she never returned the ring to him, and he too never asked her because he was deeply heartbroken and that was the last thing on his mind back then. Now, he stared in amazement at the diamond ring. He really stressed to buy this ring for her back then because he wanted it to be perfect for her and she loved it when it eventually gave her. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He cleared his straw to try again and noticed that Limbo was crying silently. They stared into each other's eyes as he laid his forehead to us and whispered, Limbo, why are you still keeping the shrink so sacredly? Why? As she was about to speak again, he said, no, no, please. Don't answer that question. Let us talk about something else. He kissed the tears and drew her into the comfort of his hands. He was scared to hear anything negative. It is better he forgets the last, the past, and just go with the present. What if she told him she broke up with him? Then, because he was not on the same level with her financially or because he was not on the same social status with her. Or even worse, if she says she had another man in her life, he would be devastated. But now, she obviously has strong feelings for him. So he would go with whatever she offers him. He just prays that she doesn't break his heart again. Lempo shifted from the comfort of his hands so she could see his eyes and said, My king, please, just give me this one chance. 
to tell you everything that happened. He tried to protest, but she became adamant and said, I was blackmailed. That stopped him shut. He looked at her in confusion. What? Yes, I was blackmailed by your female childhood friend in Houston. She went her head to explain everything to him. How she had to sacrifice her love for him so that her brother would not be deported. How her family had begged her and she eventually gave in. After she finished, they put her tears running silently down their faces and could not speak for a long time. He held her right hand so tightly. Then he crushed her into the safe comfort of his hands. Then we started sobbing loudly while he started consoling her to stop crying. The more he consoled her, the louder she sobbed until she became quiet later and dozed off. General studied a beautiful face as she napped. What a waste of time. They could have been married, even with kids, over two years, just down the drain because of some silly, wicked female friend of his. She will hear from him soon. He will blast her off and report her to her parents. That is the end of their friendship. If she can do that to him and his woman, then she is no better than an enemy. He carried Limbo to her bedroom and placed her gently on her huge bed, removed her shoes and lay down beside her, covered both of them with the quills and slept up too. Around 5 a.m. he woke up and quietly left Limbo's place. He jammed the front door to make sure it was locked and drove to his own place. All the while, thinking about her and feeling relieved now with the knowledge that she had a valid, unavoidable reason to break up with him. Yes, as a human being, he thought for a moment that she could have chosen their marriage over her brother. But then he thought that it would be unfair to destroy a brother's balance and life. It was not his fault or Lembo's fault, nor her brother's. No one is to be blamed except that lovesick blackmailer. At least now, they are all free. Lembo woke up around 8 a.m. and looked around for the general. She didn't see him. She checked her bed and table for any note he might have left for her, but found nothing. Zelch. She also scrolled through the messages and missed calls on her phone, but found nothing from him. So she sat down for a moment and thought, What is going on? How does it feel towards her now after hearing the whole truth? Or is he upset with her for sacrificing the love for her brother? She became so worried. She was not sure whether to call him or text him. Later, she showered and got dressed. A chef at the right and was stacking up the kitchen when a cell phone burst. She rushed to it and saw a message from the general that he will not be available during the day but will be sending his driver to pick her up to his place that night around 8 p.m. Then he asked if she had any objections. She replied, no. See you tonight. Lambert to change her plans for the day. She went to the spa, had herself waxed and massaged, then to lay her edges 
and buy two bottles of exotic wine for tonight. Around 4 p.m., she saw another message from the general asking how a day was going. She called him immediately, but he didn't pick. Instead, he sent a text. Still in the meeting, so she replied, My day went well. Can't wait to see you. To which he replied, Me too. By 7.58, Lambo was already waiting downstairs for his driver. She was an exquisite vision in a short teal dress with teal platforms and a nude clutch bag. She realized she was as nervous and excited as if she was a young lady on a very first date. She knows tonight would decide their fate, whether they are moving forward or not. The general's driver popped up at exactly 8 p.m. She got into the car and they were on their way. The general concluded his Zoom conversation with his mom and the whole family. His mom was so happy with the decision he just made. And she told him that as always, she will be praying for him. Then they said their goodbyes. That was the meeting he told Lambo he was in all day. He needed to have serious prayers and talks with his entire beloved family. He owed them all a detailed explanation and needed their support and understanding. Then he began dressing up. He wanted to look his best and as usual smell excitingly good and spicy. He lit the candle on the already set dining table and waited impatiently for his driver to bring Lambo. He should have known she would never just decide him like that. He should not have waited for over two solid years to ask her for the reason she just left without a word. Maybe she would have told him the truth and they could have avoided the pains they both had to go through. On a more serious note, if the case were reversed, he too would likely choose his own brother at that moment. A family would never have forgiven her if she had forsaken a brother because of him. It was a case of her hands being tied. Even if she had told him, what could he have done to help her brother? Even if he had fought with that his childhood friend, she could still have gone ahead to carry out a threat. And her family would not be happy with both him and her. His doorbell rang, interrupting his thoughts. And as he opened it, he saw her standing in his doorway looking breathtakingly gorgeous and smelling like sweet flowers. He wanted to ravish her right there, but he swallowed and controlled himself. Instead, he called his hand around hers and lifted the back of her hand to his lips and placed a kiss there while drawing her inside. He led her straight to the dining table and pulled a seat for her. Once she was comfortably seated, he poured her a glass of wine, then sat and did sing for himself. They made like conversation as they ate. She chatted with him about her older companions, her friends, and their few mutual friends. Though Lembo did most of the talking, he was not talking much, but his eyes never left her for a moment. He was so into her and paying her undivided attention. Hanging adoringly on her every word, he was also all touchy and so caring. Lambo was melting inside with a sweet ache in her heart, while the general 
was brimming with affection and passionate desire for her. His smoky eyes were so full of smoldering expression tonight that she had to sigh heavily and shyly look away for a moment. He delicately put his hand on her face and brought a dreamy gaze back to himself. She now said something funny, and they were both laughing. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Lembo, with a sad expression, said to him, My king, my general, I didn't mean to hurt you. I am sorry for all the pains I made you go through. Please, forgive me from the bottom of your heart. I loved you and I still love you till now. The general was at her side even before she finished talking. He drew her to her feet, held her beautiful face and said, My woman, my Lembo, my queen, I wish you had told me when this blackmail happened. But I will not dwell on that, as it was not your fault. There is nothing to forgive here, my darling. You really had no choice than to do what you did. And funny enough, I will say that I am proud of you. Yes, my heart shattered and I was so hot back then. But I still respect your sacrifice and act of selflessness. You are one in obedience with your generous spirit. He placed a chaste kiss on her lips, then took their glasses of wine and ushered her into his spacious and beautiful living room. The first thing Lembo saw was the nice flower vase she bought for him years ago. He had not thrown it away. She squealed happily and touched it, looked up to find him beaming at her, as she shrugged happily and said, Well, I couldn't throw it away. I still have so many things you gave me with me. I did not have the mind to discard them. They reminded me of you, of our love. He took her in his hands and hugged her for a long time. Then he drew her back to look into her eyes. See, Limbo, I need you to know that I am still as deeply in love with you as ever. I love everything about you. Most especially your pure heart. And if you would give me the chance once again. Then he knelt down. And behold, he brought his hands out of his pocket. And opened a silver box of another diamond ring. Set with a tiny crown-like stone. Please, without wasting any moment this time around. General P says, marry me, Lembo. Lembo has tears flowing freely down her face already, as she said with great happiness and joy. Yes, yes, and yes. I will marry you, my king. She began peppering his face with pecks and hugging him as he got to his feet. He laughed, swung her around his living room till both their heads were spinning. Then he placed her gently back on her feet and kissed her properly. General and Lembo are engaged to be married again. They clicked their wine glasses together in a toast to each other and drank to happiness forever. And so the story finished with a happy ending. Thank you guys for reading The General's Revenge, Episode 1. Episode 2 and Episode 3. I am grateful to all of you. God bless you. I am already cooking up another intense romantic story featuring Percy. But before then, a certain percentage of my viewers wanted me to narrate romantic movies, series, and neutral novels to them. So I will be doing that in my shots for now. So please, in order to get updates about this, kindly Subscribe to this YouTube channel 
and click on the notification button so that you will not miss any upload. Once again, thank you so much, guys. Until next time, bye.